So if you're like most people, you go to YouTube to learn just about everything about everything. And that includes lasers, of course. It's the reason this channel exists. Now, I did some searching around. I was thinking of doing a video on colored engraving. And I looked around and I found a whole bunch of videos where people were doing this. And I didn't honestly like the way any of them were doing it. It was very different than the way I've done it. So what I wanted to do in this video is show you how I do it. And I believe it's better. So stick around. Hey, how's it going? Steve here. Welcome back. Now, as I mentioned, I've been looking at how people are doing colored engraving. And to be specific, we're talking about a process where people do an engraving with their laser, they fill it with powder coat paint, and then they run the laser over that powder coat to melt it into the engraving that they created. And in almost every case, I look at this and, and the big question I have is why? Why are you doing it this way? And I think people are getting blinded by the fact that they own a laser when in fact, if you have a workshop or even really basic tools, you can do a lot of these things a lot easier, a lot cleaner without a laser. So what I'm going to show you is the process that I use. I still do the engraving with a laser. I still fill it with powder coat. And it's the rest of the process that I'll, that I'll show you how it differs. And I'll show you some things that this method can do that you can't do with those laser heated methods. So that's just the context we need here. And with that, we'll just dive right in and I'll show you what I do. All right, without belaboring design here too much, all I did was I went to Google Images and I found a nice clip art version of a lion. And you can see his head here. And it was a PNG, so I loaded it into Inkscape and converted it to an SVG file and then loaded it in, into Inkscape. Now I'm gonna use my uh, my 90 watt uh, SP3624 laser. And uh, that laser, I'm gonna go fairly quickly here when I do this engraving. What I'm gonna do is engrave fairly deeply the black pieces you see here. And I'm gonna go at 400, uh, speed of 400 millimeters per second and a power of 80. And that'll give me about a two, two and a half millimeter uh, depth engraving. So I found myself a nice piece of half inch plywood, nice and clean. Uh, and just for, you know, just for fun, I guess, I pre-stained it uh, just to close up some of the pores. You don't have to do that, but, uh, you know, I just thought it was a good idea. Shot my lion design over to the laser and started the engraving. I've sped this up about 10 times, I guess, but I'm at 400 millimeters per second. And it will engrave fairly quickly anyway. So there's our engraving. And now all that's left to do is to paint it. And I'm gonna use this uh, powder coat from ProTech. It comes in dozens of colors. Uh, I'm just gonna use black here for this sample. And it should produce a pretty nice effect. So I have my material down and uh, I'll just fill it in. And the way I am gonna fill this is I'm gonna take uh, some of that paint and use a tongue depressor to plop down a big pile. Uh, don't worry about trying to stay within the lines here. This is in kindergarten. Uh, we can make a mess here and I'll show you how we fix that later. But I'm just working this into all the holes and then when I'm satisfied, I can take the excess and I can do my best to scrape it back into the bottle just to save it for later. So a uh, really simple process and so far it's the same as every other process. All right, to this point, pretty much everything I've done is the same as the bulk of the, of the uh, processes that most people use. But at this point, people would then put this back on the laser, try some, uh, some attempt to get it all aligned again, do some mystical settings in, your, in their laser to get, the set, to get the power and the speed just right to do this engraving. And remember to turn off the air, of course and then they would re-engrave it. I do what uh, I'll say normal people do, I use a heat gun. And it's dirt cheap, it's really simple, and it works very, very well, uh, at least as well as a laser. And uh, beyond this point, I'll show you some of the other things you can do here, but uh, just run the heat gun over it. Again, we're looking for heat here, not airflow, so don't use a high setting. Use uh, low airflow, the lowest airflow you have, and uh, just heat it up. Now you'll know that it's, it's working. You'll see the, the paint kind of turn dull and then it will melt and it will turn really shiny. And then the last step here, I give it a quick sand just to finish it off uh, to get rid of any of the residue that was overspilled. And again, you would do that with any process and then a quick wipe and let's have a look and you can see it looks remarkable. And uh, you know, this is better than borax. This is better than, than baking soda. It's just a really nice process and uh, really simple. And I think you should try it. 
Okay, the good news is you're through the elementary program. Now it's time to move to the advanced course. And what I want to do here is I want to do an image that is multiple colors. So in this case, I'm going to take this lion and I've loaded it into Lightburn. You can see it here and you can see there's three distinct colors. There's predominantly orange in the background, then there's black stripes and then the blue eyes. Although when I engrave this, I'll actually use white for that. So, uh, you know, this will be an interesting test. I've, I haven't really done anything this complex in the past, but it should be a fun thing to attempt and we'll see how it turns out. Now, the reason I picked this is because doing something like this would, would actually be very difficult to do with some of those other methods. Uh, for the most part, it would be possible, but you're going to do a whole lot more work than what I'm going to show you here. Now I'm shot, I've shot it over to the laser and I'm going to do the orange layer first. And that's really an outline of the entire uh, face. So I won't belabor you with the whole uh, process of engraving here. So we'll skip through a bit of this and just get to the, the finishing piece. But again, I've engraved it down maybe two, two and a half millimeters. You can go deeper if you want. It, it just will use more paint is, is what it boils down to. And uh, once I have that, then I will take it over to my workbench and I will do the same paint fill I did before and the same heating method. And I'll come back with uh, a, basically a big orange piece of, of wood shaped like a cat. Now, for some reason, I didn't actually shoot a photo of the uh, finished orange layer, but you'll be able to see it here as we do the blue layer. So I did some masking. I masked basically everything off and I'm now doing an engraving and you can see the orange coming through as I, as I dig in here with, with the uh, rest of the face, the stripes, and this will be the, the, the parts that I fill with black. And uh, we'll take that over to the bench now and do the second layer. All right, so the process for, for doing the black paint now is really just the same as it was for, for the orange and the black I did on the lion's head. Uh, the difference here is once I get the black heated up, uh, I now then need to pull all of that blue tape off. And you can see this is a bit tedious. This is a fairly complex image, so normally it's not this difficult, but everywhere where there's blue tape, I need to pick it off and, and I can use a spatula or you can just use your fingernail to lift it off as well. Uh, now, only caution here is don't overheat this because you will melt the tape and then it'll be just a complete mess. So just lightly until you get the, the, uh, the black melted into the, in, into the uh, engraving and uh, you know, it'll be fine. Uh, the blue tape can actually take a surprising amount of heat, but you know, let's not uh, flirt with disaster here. So be careful with, with the heat. All right, and the last color here is the white. So I've masked off the image again and just to cover the eyes because that's all we're really interested in here. So I'll do the engraving. Uh, the, the eye engraving happens really quickly and I filled it with white and here's where things went bad. You can see the paint is lifting off because I, it was still warm. Uh, when you heat this this image, other colors that were already there were all, will remelt. So you have to wait for it to cool down before you peel the tape off. I was a little excited to see how it was going to work and uh, jump the gun a bit. But lesson learned. I, I've done this before. I should have known better. But uh, just a, a an important safety tip for you. Wait for things to cool before you peel the tape off. Okay, so you saw the two images I created there. One was just the single color uh, black lion's head and then I did this three color one just for fun. The, the, the real magic here is to not assume a laser is everything. I know people buy them and they think this is a fantastic tool, I can use it for everything. But what you end up doing is using what amounts to a wrench for a hammer. And that is not, not good. Uh, lasers are not heaters. Uh, the right thing to use is a heat gun. It works really well and uh, they're really, really cheap. So just do that. And uh, I'll put a link down below, uh, an affiliate link for the heat gun that I used, as well as uh, some powder coat paint, the powder coat paint that I used as well. It's available in 32 colors, including a bunch of neon colors, which is cool. Uh, now, the one caution I'll make is on that three color one where you're re-engraving over top of existing paint uh, two additional times, uh, make sure you understand what's in this paint or that you have uh, either a respirator on or you're, you know your laser has very heavy negative pressure like my laser does 
and it's vented completely out to the outside world. Uh, in my case, nothing gets into my shop and I did that on purpose. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not too worried. There isn't probably enough chlorine to cause any damage to your laser anyway, but there might be enough chlorine to cause damage to you if it's PVC based. So go to the manufacturer and ask them what's in this uh, if you're concerned at all. But if you are worried, wear a respirator. So I did another video a while back on color engraving on ceramic tile using a CO2 laser. Uh, that involved a whole lot of masking and a whole lot of paint. Uh, worked really well though, and I'll put a link to that video up above if you're interested. Go watch that and I'll see you over there. And we'll wind down here, so get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.